All right, well, I'm here with Brian at the Nissan booth, and I, I grabbed him. You know, he was running it away from me, but I tackled him. No, I'm just kidding. Thanks, Brian, for taking the time to uh, chat with me. Thank you, Ken. Uh, Brian's going to tell us a little bit about the Leaf. So, you know, where there's a lot of buzz and excitement about the E Plus that just got announced. What can you tell us for some of the differentiations uh, versus the 40 kilowatt hour version? Well, I mean, the key changes are obviously the battery. So, um, what we did, we took a, a 40 kilowatt hour battery, which is in the standard version of the Leaf today, and now in the Plus series, we're going to call the US and Canada. The Plus Series Leaf, um, which will be available in three trims by the way, S, S, V, and SL, yep. um, it has a 62 kilowatt hour battery. So larger capacity battery. Um, what's that do? Well, number one, big improvement in the range um, for those people that want more range. For a lot of people, the 40 kilowatt hour battery is plenty of range, offers plenty of range for them. Um, so we are going to continue to sell in that car. We're just adding another one to the family. Yep. Okay, so mm -hmm tell you that first. The 62 kilowatt, 62 kilowatt hour battery will deliver up to 225 miles of range EPA tested. Mm -hmm. So um, so, so big improvement uh, yeah, in the is. range. For people that need more range or want it, of course, like I said, there's going to be a price premium for that, which we haven't announced pricing yet, um, but but it will, it will be a little bit more expensive. Number two, it also having that additional capacity allowed us to take the motor and tune it from 110 kilowatt output to 160. Right. And that 160 gets you horsepower to 214. Okay. Whereas in the standard version it's 147. You still have that super fast yeah, about 250 line. torque if I might 250 torque, yep. yes exactly. Yep. And you still have that uh, you know that immediate what we're used to with EVs, you and mm -hmm. I, and everybody mm -hmm. else that's, that's driven one before. We that call it the EV to, smile. The EV right? smile, <laughs> that's right. That kind of put you pushing the back of the it. seat, take off, yeah, exactly. from, from zero. Without getting whiplash, though, because exactly. that's not safe. Yeah. So you still have that, of course, mm -hmm. but with the additional horsepower, you pick up more speed, especially in the mid-range. So think of highway merging, that sort of a situation. Yes. It's, um, it's a nice boost of, of power that you get in that power band. So, so those are the big changes there. Other than that, all the other features that we're used to on the standard LEAF, uh, including ProPilot Assist, uh, E-Pedal, all the advanced safety features, blind spot warning, intelligent all uh, around view monitor, um, and, and, uh, intelligent emergency braking, all of those uh, components are, are available on this car as well, of course. Um, now one thing, we talked a little bit about batteries, and one thing you can comment on is that, uh, my understanding, because it is a, a bigger pack, um, now these are still in-house AECS uh, batteries that are built, and there is a slight chemistry change, is that correct, to these batteries? Yeah, essentially having larger battery packs, the, the way the stack is, yep. um, we're basically able to, um, by virtue of the increased capacity, mm -hmm. there's additional space within the battery cells, within the cells themselves. And essentially what that does is, it doesn't create heat as okay. much. Um, so there isn't as much resistance, if you will. Okay. Batteries inherently, when they're being used, get hot. They create heat, right? Mm -hmm. um, so it still does that. It's just to a lesser degree based on the change in the chemistry. Gotcha, gotcha. And one thing I did also notice uh, on the new um, E Plus versus the the 40 kilowatt hour version or Leaf 2.0. I don't know what to call the older one now because it's not that old. It's still it's new. Year old, yeah. I know is uh, the infotainment system, so it's a little bit more updated. Um, I kind of had a peek earlier, played around with it. So and, and I have a 40 kilowatt, so yeah, I'm very familiar with it. So this one is much more snappier, just a little bit more soft phone-ish type of you know smartphone kind of interface, a little more smooth, uh, very very snappy. Um, and I also understand that you'll not be providing over-the-air updates, which is something new for Nissan. Right, exactly. So you're talking about the screen. So the mm -hmm. screen is an 8-inch screen yep. versus a 7-inch screen, so mm -hmm. a bit bigger. And plus, you're right, the, the, uh, the resolution is a little snappier, yep. as you say. Yep. Um, it's just an updated system. Um, there's nothing wrong with the system nope. that's in the seven in the the seven inch display yep. on the 40 kilowatt. It's just a little bit enhanced because mm -hmm. um, we want to create some product differentiation between the the two vehicles and the yep. family. That's number one. The over the air updates you mentioned are for the navigation system. Mm -hmm. So those are over the air updates that uh, just happen automatically. Okay. A customer doesn't have to go to the dealership or anything like that. Nice. They'll get pushed to the vehicle. And that new system also has a point-to-point -point navigation, so I could literally have a, an address yeah. mm -hmm. typed into my phone, mm -hmm. and when I get into my car, transfer it over to the car, it's oh, automatically the okay. navigation system. Um, so it just kind of creates more of a seamless experience. Nice. Um, you know, and that's what you know, Nissan Intelligent Mobility, as you've heard us say before, yes. uh, intelligent integration, intelligent power, intelligent yep. driving, that's intelligent uh, integration at work right there. For absolutely you. is, absolutely is. Um, and the other thing too uh, I'll mention is it's got faster, fast charging capability. Yes, that's right. So um, on the 40 kilowatt and the prior generations leaf, 
prior generation Leaf for that matter um, yep. was 50 kilowatt uh, fast charging. Yep. This vehicle is capable of 100 kilowatt. Mm -hmm. So we're in the process of getting 50, 100 kilowatt chargers mm -hmm. uh, installed. Yep. Uh, throughout North America. Yep. And as we do, and people use them, they'll be able to take advantage of faster quick charging. Okay, and I understand that that's 100 is a peak, so it should kind of mean average out around 70 or so, depending on temperatures, depending on environment, depending on how, how you know, full just your like, battery is, like just everything like else. Just like any fast charger. Correct, you know? yeah, excellent. If a, if a fast charger is rated at whatever kilowatt, it typically, that's the peak, and it's not the sustained level right. of charging, as you probably know, right? Right, exactly. So, but, but that is the peak, and that peak is important Important because it allows you to get that much faster in terms of uh, throughput yep. uh, and get charged uh, get charged up faster. Important when you have larger capacity batteries. Exactly. Things. Now uh, I'm going to ask you a question that I didn't ask you before and just get your your reaction to it. But it's a really easy question. From what I've seen in Japan and, and obviously here uh, North American, it's still a Chatamo fast charging standard. Yes. I, I'm under the assumption that it's going to be the same in Europe as well. Um, yes, that's because uh, some people were saying is it going to be CCS or not because that's starting to get a lot more yeah. popular uh, in Europe. So it's still going to stay with the Chatmo standard. Chatamo that, that is because global. of the vehicle to grid and all the other uh, aspects that bidirectional charging through Chatmo offer you. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So in every one of the countries you mentioned, yep. U.S., Europe, mm -hmm. uh, and Japan, mm -hmm. the bidirectional capability of the vehicle through the Chatmo system yeah. opens up a lot of doors. It does, and, and yeah. we're working on a variety of different projects and new business ventures that are very exciting under the Nissan Energy umbrella. Good, okay. In North America and Europe? Because in, in, in Asia, it's already going. It's already it's, pretty busy. And right? each yeah. market will have kind of different uh, applications for it. Okay. So in the US, we're piloting a program at a few of our large facilities for a vehicle to business application, which essentially okay. using a, a, a Chatmo capable yeah. charger that will basically draw power from the battery and put it back into a building with the idea of reducing the energy bill of that particular sure. building by shaving off those those peak times yep. where energy is the most expensive just a little bit but it can end up saving thousands of dollars so we're testing that right now mm -hmm. and we're really excited about the prospects for it cool. and we're uh, we're doing the testing now to get to a point where we can commercialize it Looking forward to that. Well, thanks, Brian, for taking the time to talk to me. I know you're thanks, a busy man. guy. Appreciate thanks. it. I appreciate right. it. Thank Take you very care. much. Yep. Okay, guys. Well, I'm in the new Leaf E Plus here at the Nissan Display in Detroit. Uh, I wanted to focus on the uh, uh, infotainment system because that's really the big change in this model other than, of course, the battery pack. Um, being uh, 62 kilowatt hours, the faster charging capabilities with up to 100 kilowatts uh, with a more mean average of about 70, 50 to 70. But the infotainment sister, uh, system is at an upgrade and it's basically more intuitive. It's a little slightly bigger display. It's an eight inch display uh, versus the current seven inch. Um, buttons and menu system look very similar to the existing one, but it does have a different front on it. As you can see, it's a little more up to date with the icons and the color patterns and the systems here. Um, it's much more responsive I can tell you that uh, based on uh, the uh, screen that I have in my 40 kilowatt hour uh, Nissan Leaf, my 2018. But I'll go through some of the connections. It's pretty well, it's very similar um, uh, menuing system, of course, uh, from that perspective. Um, let's see if it has anything more. It doesn't look like it's got a lot more features here. Very similar screen as far as uh, energy uses and some of the current screens that they have today uh, from the infotainment system, uh, nearby stations. Um, it's, it's definitely much more responsive. I can tell you that, you know, that screen would have loaded in about five seconds or so for myself on the older system. So it's definitely got some more options. Um, settings. Uh, oh, I do like some of the settings here that you can do. Um, low battery, out of range, uh, out of charging range, which is pretty cool. So if you're driving and it's telling you need to charge, um, uh, filters, all these different settings that you can do uh, in that perspective. You can save charging stations. Uh, in fact, I should look that up and just see. Oh, I did. So that's much more responsive. Uh, zero so just that, okay, let's see what else we got. Should have the uh, current um, uh, egg as we call it. 
Uh, so that's that's pretty responsive here. I mean, again, that would you know it, it doesn't look as pretty on the older system, and it's a little bit more cumbersome and slow. So that's pretty good, and it does have pinch and zoom, much more responsive. Uh, James and Aaron, if you're watching this, certainly you'll you'll be nodding your head, going, "Oh man, that's a lot nicer than what I have today." Uh, it's it's much more uh, user friendly and smartphone type ish uh, requirements. Or uh, okay, and that's just for updating system to connect to the. Uh, to that so we'll stop with that all the SM, uh, SXM stuff you've got to subscribe to if you want that um, vehicle data transmission GPS that's all kind of standard stuff that it does today um, I guess yeah you have to sit okay like they always do if you want to uh, to get all that kind of stuff let's go back here uh, what else we have here system information um, not sure if this is going to give us any information that we don't know but I thought I'd throw that out there for you guys to f obviously you've accepted the software version so I can't tell you uh, whether or not that that is here now here is a new feature where they have start where software updates and one thing Nissan has explained is that the infotainment system as well as the BMS management system of the firmware will be OTA or over-the-air upgradable um, and it looks like that's set for auto right now there's a manual method or auto you can toggle um, if I start it, I don't think there's an... Oh, you need Wi-Fi. So let's see if we can connect here to Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi in the house. Let's see if we can find something. Turn this on. Wi-Fi is something new. All right. So after some connections uh, to wireless, it took me a while. As you can see, I tried to do a software update, and it's telling me that this software version is the latest version. But that's cool that uh, you can start it and it will go out and check for the software updates over the air. In this case, it's using Wi-Fi um, that I've uh, hotspotted my phone actually to connect because I couldn't get one of the in-house ones and it comes back. So that's a cool feature. That's, uh, that's going to save a lot of time not having to go to the dealers and all that kind of stuff for map updates too. Uh, let's just see if that does anything here. Um, lots of features here. No favorite countries defined. Let's see if that, uh, oh, you got to have a subscription. Okay, so Nissan's going to get you somehow on that. Looks like you're going to have to have a subscription to update maps. If I do home time, yeah, so uh, obviously this car hasn't been sold, but th there are uh, things that you can do from that. Update settings, okay, same kind of thing. Regional, SMX, and license information. I don't know. That's just going to talk about their standard license that they offer. So that's a really cool new feature from a uh, Nissan perspective. The audio looks uh, relatively the same with uh, same kind of uh, functions. Uh, XM, just nicer, just looks nicer. It's got a nicer looking display. There's still the Bose system in here from that perspective. I won't play any music because I don't want to get hammered by YouTube, but uh, lots of different settings and so forth. Bluetooth audio if I want to stream. Uh, from that perspective, if I want to plug a USB and then main settings for all the standard stuff. So it looks like there's not a whole heck of a lot difference. It's a very similar menu, menuing system, just it's much more responsive. I can tell you that, folks. This is very, very, in fact, it's, it's really, really quick. Um, I haven't had a chance to try the system voice stuff. It doesn't, doesn't work all that great in, um, in my, uh, my leaf there, but um, we'll have to wait and see what it comes out with from that perspective but uh, you know all the different settings for speed so basically they haven't they just kind of updated the menuing system they've kept the actual tiered and the folders and the structure of the menu in fairly and in, in, uh, same same structure they've just given it some a little bit nicer coloring and, and of course it's just much more responsive so that's good slightly bigger display should make it a little easier uh, a little bit different uh, lighting but otherwise everything else in here looks the same uh, nothing other from a control perspective uh, there's nothing really different here everything is exactly the same controls uh, this being an sl model it looks like because it has the leather seating and the updated uh, um, of course the heated seats uh, infotainment and all that kind of stuff the uh, armrest is still the same all those goodies so really not different other than you have to kind of peek behind uh, some of the uh, layers here to find the differences, but I hope that gives you a little bit general better sense on what's coming with the LEAF E+.